This is Manos Burlakis presenting Case 29 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of a retrograde CTO PCI through the Lima that was done using ECMO hemodynamic support. This was the case of a 61-year-old man who had undergone coronary bypass graft surgery twice in the past. He presented with refractory angina and uh, severe ischemic cardiomyopathy with an ejection fraction of 20 to 30 percent. A SPECT scan demonstrated that all myocardium was viable except for the inferior wall. Coronary angiography demonstrated a flash occlusion of the left main, and the same was found for the right coronary artery. The patient had undergone multiple prior standing procedures. The left internal mammary artery graft was patent and was anastomosed to a diagonal branch, providing collaterals to the posterior descending artery as well as the LAD. This is the iliocranial view, demonstrating a very small diffusely diseased LAD with additional occlusions in the mid portion of the vessel. And this is a lateral view demonstrating potentially some flow into the circumflex and once again the CTOLAD with diffuse disease. All saphenous vein grafts were occluded as confirmed by an aortography. This patient presented an important therapeutic challenge. He was fairly young at age 61 with severe symptoms and uh, very complex anatomy. He was not deemed to be a surgical candidate given the two prior cardiac surgeries and the lack of any additional graft material. And PCI was considered the only other option because heart transplant was not, not offered to him due to continued smoking. The assessment of the CTO is also complex. The left main who had an osteal occlusion with a clear cap, however, it was blunt. The length was long, although the exact length was not known. He actually had two vessels, both the LAD and the circumflex were occluded, and both were filling via collaterals from the patent lima to diagonal graft. Since this was the last patent vessel, a decision was made to perform the case under ECMO support because the slightest complication or ischemia could result in a, a downward spiral in the patient's death. The strategy in terms of crossing was to first attempt undergrade crossing, followed as a last resort by retrograde, retrograde crossing through the Lima to LAD graft. Multiple accesses was obtained. The patient had a right, actually a left internal jugular artery uh, access and right heart catheterization demonstrated a pulmonary capillary wedge pressure of 18 millimeters of mercury. The left main was engaged with an XB 3.5 guide that was inserted through the right common femoral artery, whereas the ECMO arterial cannula was inserted through the left common femoral artery and the ECMO venous cannula that was a 22 French was inserted through the right femoral vein. The lima was in engaged using a VB1 guide from the left radial axis. Dual injection demonstrates the flash occlusion of the left main and uh, keeps the uncertainty in terms of the length of the CTO in the course of the occlusion. This is another dual injection demonstrating some backward filling from the diagonal and the LAD, however, still there is uncertainty as to the course of the left main and the proximal LAD. As per our plan, we performed some undergrade wire escalation attempts using a turnpike LP catheter and a pilot 200 guide wire, which seemed to make some progress, however, the course remained unclear. We subsequently changed the wire to a Gaia second that also advanced, but the course was unclear. We went back to a pilot 200 that's also advanced to a small branch. However, there is some concern for potentially small vessel perforation. Hence, that approach was stopped. During those attempts, a small path to determine the position of the guide 
demonstrated this significant dissection in the left main ostium, which effectively put an end to our undergrade crossing attempts. That was a very challenging moment in the procedure. There was an initial thought of stopping since going through the Lima would carry increased risk. However, this was known to be the patient's last potential option and the patient had an ECMO implanted with a 15 French arterial and a 22, 22 French venous cannula. Hence, we decided to take some additional pictures to devise a retrograde plan. Retrograde injection demonstrates once again that the diagonal fills from the lima, there is some backwards filling, and this is probably an LAD interceptal branch. There is still some contrast staining from the previous area of dissection, and the same findings were observed uh, in another injection. Given these images, the decision was to attempt retrograde crossing from the lima back in the diagonal and then going back into the left main. We tried to wire into the diagonal retrograde, however, because of the very steep angle that was close to 180 degrees, we were unable to advance any guide wire through there. As a result, we used a pre-shaped catheter, which is called a supercross, that has a 120 degree bend, and by using this catheter, we were able to advance initially a fielder FC and subsequently a pilot 200 into uh, the proximal diagonal branch. Initially, when we tried to exchange this for a turnpike, we had significant difficulty. The supercross itself would not actually cross into the proximal diagonal branch. However, subsequently, we were able to re-advance the pilot 200 wire into the diagonal, and then the turnpike LP did take the bend and was advanced into the, di into the diagonal branch. We then attempted uh, retrograde wiring using a Pilot 200 guide wire that, to our pleasant surprise, did advance quite favorably more proximal towards the left main ostium. And by additional wiring, we came actually very, very close to the ostium of the left main. For a moment, we thought we might be able to cross uh, true to true from retrograde into the aorta. However, we were unable to penetrate the left main ostium. As a result, we advanced an undergrade uh, polymer jacketed pilot guide wire, advanced as a knuckle, now that the ambiguity retrograde was clarified. And then by doing that, we were then uh, able to perform uh, wiring attempts followed by a reverse car, but advancing a 2.0, a 2.5 millimeter balloon over the undergrade guide wire. Unfortunately, this did not work. However, we then advanced uh, a guideliner into the proximal LAD, and by doing that, we were able to insert the retrograde Pilot 200 guide wire into the guideliner and into the undergrade guide catheter. Of note, that was a very complex procedure. It took a long time to insert the ECMO, perform the right heart cath, perform the undergrade wiring attempts and the retrograde wiring attempts. So at this time, were in the case for five and a half hours. The patient did remain stable for most of the procedure, however, during some periods in time, the arterial pressure waveform would flatten out, consistent with extra support from the ECMO, and the patient would uh, require intermittently support uh, with pressures. After an R350 guide wire was externalized, we performed inflations of the left main with a 2.0 by 20 millimeter balloon, which, to our very pleasant surprise, did restore flow not only into the LAD, which we knew was occluded further down, past the touchdown of uh, the diagonal, but however, we also saw a very large circumflex artery that was not clearly appreciated in the diagnostic pictures. We then used a twin pass microcatheter to advance uh, a Pilot 200 guide wire into the circumflex, which was surprisingly difficult because of the angulation and the tortuosity. However, we were eventually able to advance the wire. We aimed to advance a second workhorse wire into the obtuse marginal branch. However, this was not feasible. And as a result, we decided to perform a T-stent technique. The stent could not be delivered into the circumflex because of the angulation. However, we were able to advance a guideliner catheter into the circumflex, 
and then deliver a 2.5 by 18 millimeter drug eluting stent that was successfully deployed into the proximal circumflex. The LAT was predilated and then a 2.5 by 22 millimeter drug eluting stent was placed. The stent clearly was undersized compared to the original size of the left main, however, given the diffuse disease distally, we wanted to avoid any distal dissection. The stand was deployed into the left main, and post-standing uh, picture demonstrated that the flow in the circumflex was restored. There was, however, no competitive flow anymore into the LAD, presumably because of the dissection of the distal edge. We performed uh, post-dilation as well as uh, as a low pressure inflation in the distal edge of the stand, and now we have flow both in the circumflex as well as the left anterior descending artery. We placed an additional small drag eluting stand into the distal edge of the stand to cover that area of dissection that restored excellent flow into the LAD in the diagonal. And then to ensure that the ostium of the left main was covered, we inserted a 3.5 by 8 millimeter drag eluting stand that was post dilated providing a nice and geographic result with restoration flow both in the circumflex as well as in the LAD in diagonal. Of course, the LAD did have more CTOs downstream, but at this point we did not intend to continue anymore since seven and a half hours had elapsed. Fluoroscopy time was 103 minutes and the air care dose was 3.1 gray. A total of 305 ml of contrast were used and in another view you can see there is excellent flow in the circumflex as well as the LAD. Before we finished, we performed an injection in the lima to verify that there was no injury of the graft and indeed there was uh, excellent flow and the patient was hemodynamically stable. After checking the wedge pressure that was uh, mild elevated at 21, we were actually able to win the ECMO into the cath lab and remove it before the patient was transferred to the intensive care unit. This challenging case uh, demonstrates several facts about CTOPCI. The first is that when retrograde CTOPCI is done through the last remaining vessel, it is important to have hemodynamic support. In this particular case, we elected to have full support with an ECMO because the slightest, the, the slightest issue with perfusion could result in the patient going into cardiogenic shock and could not be resuscitated, especially given the very low ejection fraction. The second is the importance of persistence. When we had the initial dissection of the left main, the thought was that we should probably stop the case because the chances of succeeding were low. However, by looking again at the films and the potential options, and by using various strategies, wiring retrograde, using the supercross, using the turnpike, then doing reverse card and guideline reverse card, the twin pass for wiring, we were finally able to recanalize the left main and restore flow into the circumflex as well as the LED. We were also lucky to find that the circumflex was a large, a large vessel because although we knew that the territory was viable, we could not visualize well the circumflex during the initial diagnostic pictures as well as the dual injection. Thank you.